She used to be an actress. She ever do anything I saw? I think her biggest deal was she starred in a pilot. What's a pilot? Well, you know the show's on TV. I don't watch TV. Yes, but you're aware that there's an invention called television, and on that invention they show shows. Yeah. Well, the way they pick the shows on TV is they make one show, and that show's called a pilot. And they show that one show to the people who pick shows, and on the strength of that one show, they decide if they want to make more shows. Some get accepted and become TV programs, and some don't and become nothing. She starred in one of the ones that became nothing. Welcome to Couch Pilots, all of my friends. It's the show that dares to fly into the unknown territory of awful television pilots of the past. My name is Jason, and with me is my bitch Cassidy. It's Captain Bill here. Good evening. I don't mind being a bitch. I, I know that about you, and that's why I did that. I've, I've, I've been a bitch to a lot of people. I Believe me, I know. You know what? You're looking at one of them. And a, <laughs> and a lot of people have been my bitch. Oh, shit. A lot of girls. <laughs> Been my bitch. Okay, no. okay, let's talk about the word bitch. Um, with someone that says, uh, I, okay, so I went to a, I think it was a hockey game last year, and uh, the ho- at the right when I got there, they were winding down. It wasn't just a dog show, but it was like exclusively a collie show, uh, an exhibition room full of just cages and pins, collies, collies everywhere. Collies to the left of me, collies to the right of me. You go in there and you start start saying, where my bitch is at? Someone's going to come up and say, oh, we have an area of bitches over here. Right. Uh, these are some uh, northern collie bitches. Over-. And, like, how did that word evolve from, like, being, like, a female dog? Is it in heat? Is that what it is? I think so, yeah. Versus just calling someone a bitch and how that's changed in, uh, in meaning over the years. I don't know. And just think if we wouldn't have had that word, what we would be calling women that we're Broads. mad at. No, women you're mad at. Oh. Um, or, well, because like, no, they say my bitches. So, like, like tricks? Hoes? Hunts? Uh, chicken heads? Thoughts? You've heard thought, right? T H O T? Uh uh-uh. uh. That's, that's a word. That, that's, a, that's a ghetto fabulous word you could use to describe a. I need uh, to watch more movies. Yeah, yeah, that's right. I learn all my slang from movies. <laughs> Y'all crazy thought, but you fuck so good. I'm on top of butt. <laughs> that's pretty good. <laughs> right. Not bad. <laughs> You're on top of your game tonight. Uh, um, well, 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 that, that that's still ought to be determined. Well, let's let's bring in strong by saying, on top of your game, do you have the results of the captain's challenge? Now, and for the people who don't know what the captain's challenge is. Every week on Couch Pilots, we talk about TV shows that had one episode, TV shows that didn't make it past number one, except for last season, where we had 10 episode seasons, and during those 10 episodes, you picked five shows, and, and I picked five shows. Yep. And uh, Of well, what? W- huh? Shows that we love. Shows that, that made it. That made it and that we love. And uh, what we did was we decided that we would calculate the total downloads, uh, you would get credit for the downloads on your episodes, yep. and, and I would get the credit for the downloads on my episodes. And at the end of it, we would tally that up, and we would see who was the pilot's challenge cap- champion. It's just that easy, right? Yeah. It's just that easy. And um, I know we've got you've hooked up the pachinko machines to some of the downloads. And yeah, you- I've been going. I've been going through a lot of punch cards. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've been. Um, Doing a lot of arithmetic. We don't really talk about the pachinko machines very much anymore, but yeah. they're, they're two 7,000-pound non-electrical machines that calculate all the numbers that have to do with couch pilots, whether it be our frequent flyers, a.k.a. our listeners, right, uh, and all of the frequent p- flyer points they accrue. Anything number-wise uh, that has to do with couch pilots, they calculate, including the captain's challenge. Right, and you can get um, those points by uh, downloading the show, telling a friend about the show, posting about the show, yeah, any of those things uh, the pachinko machines calculate. and They, they know. They keep track of it. Yeah. I mean, we have a master list mm-hmm. of where everybody stands with it. Right. Um, it's kind of like top secret because we don't, you know. You don't want to get that out there. No. no. As far as we're concerned, everyone is equal. Wink. There's a few people at the top. But um, what did you what did you pull from the Pachinko machine concerning the challenge of last season? Well, I think the best thing for us to do is for you to play uh, some music for uh, a, a victory speech. And oh, okay. What's, uh, what kind of victory speech do you want? What kind of music? This is fine. This is this will do. Yeah, this will do. Uh, are you ready for the speech? Are you you ready? 
Um, for the, why, don't yeah. you, why don't you go ahead and introduce me, and then I'll do the speech. It's like the Academy Awards. Can, we, can you uh, wet, me, wet up the mic a little bit? Can I wet it up? Yeah. I don't want to, but I can. No, you don't. Don't do no, it. I will. I'll, I'll go. Uh, I'll go crazy on it. How's, how's that? That's Ladies rough. and gentlemen. Oh, that's oh your mic. Yeah, mine. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> Why would we do yours? I'm the I'm making the announcement, right? Right, right, right. And right. then you can do whatever you want. I'm announcing you. Okay. Uh, let's wet the mic and go. Ladies and gentlemen. Here to announce the winner of the Captain's Challenge. Please give it up for Captain Philip Restashore. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, everyone. Um, the uh, winner of the Couch Pilot Challenge was me. Um, so do you want to do you want me to you want to be wet again and then introduce me to, to give my speech? No, no. Let's do that. You're wet again. What? The winner of this year's Captain's Challenge is Captain Philip Restashore. This is his first win and his 15th nomination. Congratulations, Captain. Thank you. Uh, thank you, everyone. This is a truly an amazing honor. Thank you. Um, I, have, I have so many people that to thank for this award. You're reading something. You've prepared. You you knew you were going to win, and you prepared a speech. That's correct. <sighs> kind of ruined it by interrupting me. Awesome! Thank you, everyone. This is truly an amazing honor. And you know me. I like. I don't give speeches. Yeah. There, there's there's only a few speeches in my life that I've prepared for that I've wanted to do. Yeah. And I I haven't got the chance. But this is this is the platform, All right? right? Yeah. This is it. I don't beat you very often. No, you don't. It, it, it hurts. Well, wait till after my speech. We'll see. You better put that on loop. It's a long time. It's, it's been on loop. <laughs> thank you, everyone. This is uh, truly an amazing honor. I have so many people to thank for this award. I'm hoping the producers can bear with me and not cut off the music and roll, uh, not cut me off. <laughs> Sorry, I'm nervous. Not cut off the mic. And uh, roll the music before I'm done. Um, I knew from the start that the pilot's challenge that I would be the underdog. So many people said I didn't have a chance. That I couldn't compete with Captain Black in this race, or any other race for that matter. Well, except the number of women I've betted. That's a no-brainer. I'm obviously nobody will ever be able to achieve my greatness. Hashtag one hundred plus. Thank you, thank, thank you. But anyway, I'm sorry. I I tend to ramble. I tend to ramble when I'm nervous. Huh. Here we go. Uh, I first would like to thank Jason and insert name here for bestowing upon me the honor of being the best man for their wedding. I have known Jason for many years, and I consider him one of my dearest friends and closest friends. And I know he feels exactly the same way, insert name here, has done the impossible in getting the ultimate bachelor to settle down. She has looked past the number of flaws and idiosyncrasies and accepted him for who he is. This isn't about your win. Bear with me. Uh, <laughs> a broken down middle aged man who what? needs 24 hour around the clock care huh? could insert name here have done better sure but we are all grateful for her sacrifice and kind heart it's, it's as if she adopted a special needs elderly dog with one leg missing and P PSD from being a fighting dog bait but I digress. I'm sorry. These two human beings are now bonded in holy matrimony. This and isn't I, about and, the captain's challenge. And I couldn't be more happier for them. This award is not for me. This award is for everyone out there who never were believed in, who has been bullied and intimidated by their co-hosts, or made to feel like their jokes aren't as funny as their co-hosts. <laughs> this award is for you. 
When I first met, insert name here, I told her she was fighting a losing battle, but she never gave up. I told her that Jason had much to offer except a fear of commitment and financial stability. She didn't care. She pressed on like a soldier on the front lines of Beach Normandy. Some would call, insert name here, crazy, but I call her a saint. Jason, I know, because I am literally your best friend, right now is the luckiest man in the world because he has finally found someone to complete him. Insert name here. Is his 20% to her 20, 80%? Huh? I didn't win this award for myself. I'd like to thank my campaign manager, Didi, for really talking me off the ledge with this Alice thing and making me replace it with the pilot of Futurama. Without her... I spent a lot of time on this. Without her guidance, I'm sure I would have still beat Captain Black, but maybe not by such a landslide. Speaking of landslide, I want to read a quote from an amazing, oh inspiring artist, Stevie Nicks. Shut up. I took my love, I took it down. I climbed a mountain and I turned around. Get off the stage! And I saw my reflection in the snow-covered hills till the landslide brought me down. Oh, mirror in the sky, what is love? Can the child without my heart rise above? Wrap it up! Can I sail through the changes, ocean tide? Can I handle the seasons of my life? These are very powerful words. Powerful words that led us all in our daily lives. I hate this! With this award, my heart did in fact rise above. I am sailing through those changes in tides. I can handle the seasons of my life. I also want to take a moment to thank Mr. and Mrs. Insert Name here for paying for such a beautiful wedding. Sparing no expense to give their daughter the most memorable days of her life. They have taken a cat box and turned it into the London Symphony Orchestra. Let's give a big round of applause to insert Mrs. and Mrs. Her name here. So on this day, insert date here, let us raise our glasses in honor of the wonderful couple and let's toast that, insert name here, never comes to her senses and realizes she really, really, really settled. I also want to thank those guests that have. <laughs> I also want to thank those guests that we have had on Couch Pilots to review these shows that I selected. I don't remember anyone that was on, but I am sure they did a sufficient job in their appearance on the show. I want to thank God. Without Him, none of this would have been possible. And I can't forget to send a special thanks to the man, Filippo. Farnsworth for his invention that made this whole thing possible the television kind of a clap there would be great thanks <laughs> and finally there is one man that I cannot leave out my confidant my friend I'm his best friend <sighs> And he is the man that really makes this plane fly on Couch Pilots. Thank you so much for everything you do, DSJ. Thank you, everyone. It's truly an honor, and I'm humbled by this experience. Thank you. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. I think that's the last time we do something like that. If uh, a season's worth of episodes is going to culminate in that masturbatory piece you just did right there, that was great. Uh, uh, we need some. We need a little cleanser here. It was not great. Did you not enjoy it? I read it to my I, I, my wife. Read it, and I and and then are we just skipping what? Okay, yeah, I'm done with this. This is some this is some bullshit. We'll come, we'll come back to it. Can't do it. Hello. Uh, Kevin, you're on the Couch Pies program. I love you. What are you doing? Oh, I'm just sitting down, uh, not making brown. Okay. Are you, uh, you making iced tea? Just lemonade. Just lemonade? 
Yeah. Hey, Kevin, this is Blake. Oh, hey, Blake, what's going on? Hey, I just read my acceptance speech for winning the Pilots Challenge. What do you think? Oh, awesome. Congratulations. You're Thank welcome you. for uh, sharing something on Facebook to all my friends. Uh, without, uh, you, I thought you were going to keep that a secret. Yeah, well, too bad. I just, uh, I just ruined the secret. Ruined. Yeah, that's how you won. I revel in it. Fucking revel in it. Jesus Christ. Listen, uh, <laughs> Kevin. A couple. What's qu- he talking about? <laughs> Nothing. Listen, uh, Kevin. You were just in St. Louis, right? Yes, I was. And you went to one of my favorite places in the world. And I'm not joking. I love this place more than just about anywhere else ever. The well, City before, Museum. Before we get there. Before okay. we get there. I went to see the St. Louis Battlehawks of the XFL play. That was the big thing. How was it? It was a Christmas present. It was awesome. We stayed in the uh, the Holiday Inn that's like literally right next to the Dome at America Center. There hasn't been football in St. Louis in a number of years, so the crowd is great. That that was my question. The the crowd was psyched. Was it? Was there a lot of attendance? Oh my gosh! Yes. Really? Packed. Awesome. Pretty sure it was sold out. Yeah, it was awesome they sold out the bottom of the like they don't sell the upper deck seats just because they wouldn't be able to sell out then and there would be a lot of people just buying those because they're cheaper or whatever but it was yeah packed and there were a bunch of people all like wearing like homemade like merch and stuff really it was was super cool to see and the tickets were reasonably priced weren't they yeah, it was thirty bucks. Yeah, that's thirty great. bucks, and then I used my hotel points to stay at the hotel. So Hell yeah. it was a pretty, pretty cheap weekend. Did you have, Did you have so, sex? What's up? Did you have sex? Uh, no, we actually didn't. No, no. it was a very tiring day. Oh. Did, you, did you have uh, sex so, with yourself? Uh, oh, multiple times. Yes. Okay. At the at the stadium. Well, that's incredible. That's that's the closest. We're in Central Illinois. And that's the closest um, XFL team is St. Louis, right? Cor- correct. Yeah. Okay. It's so the that- only Midwestern team. And in last time the XFL was around it was about twenty years ago, and they did one season. So who the hell correct. knows how long it's going to go? I, that's awesome that you yeah. get to go to a game. Mm-hmm. They're the best teams in the XFL. They're the best fans in the XFL. So uh, uh, it's it's. We're spoiled in the Midwest with that, and, and they're a really good team. So they, they've only lost one game. It's been four weeks, so they're three. Okay, months. not bad. Yeah, they're really good. Got a really good quarterback, so it's 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 really fun to watch. It's not. It's really not that much different than NFL rules, but oh yeah, no, it's, uh, it's pretty cool. Hold on, I'm getting a call real quick. Yeah. Okay. Hello. Hey, how's it going, man? Oh, going well. How are you doing? I can't hear it all. Oh, Jason? Yeah. He's, he's, hey, did you know that I won, I won the Pilots Challenge? I heard that he lost the Pilots Challenge. Yeah, I, yeah. I mean, I figured that you won, being that he lost, but I just wanted to, yeah, I heard that he lost. What did you think of that speech? I mean, it was great, wasn't it? It was very good. It was very good, and uh, I like how you, uh, you kind of went into something else there, but it was, uh, it was, it was very good. I, I appreciated hearing. Thanks, man. Hey. Yeah. So I, I, I'm glad you went to the football game. I'm glad you had a great time in St. Louis. Yeah. Um, yeah. Kind of wondering why you didn't have sex. Oh, you heard that. Oh, yeah. yeah, oh, you're, yeah, you're, yeah. you're in the same room. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah I'm, I'm kind of bummed, too. Hold on. I'm getting another call here. This is Adam oh, Z. Sorry. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Hey, how's it going? Hey, uh, you hung up on me. I was just going to ask. Um, oh, that's fine. Bad. That's fine. I was just going to ask how the uh, city museum went. Now, City Museum. Now, here's here's the thing. So we left the football game in the third quarter because I am a man who has diarrhea frequently. Sure. But cha cha cha. Not not that frequently does it become debilitating. This day was one of those days. Wow. Where I was not able to enjoy myself. Can't do it. Um, I did not have my. Um, anti-diarrheal medicine that I would have taken in the morning. I completely forgot uh, to even bring any. And it was debilitating. So I was like, just going to the bathroom like, oh my gosh, this is terrible. So we went back to the hotel, watched the rest of the game there. And then we're sitting there like, okay, let's figure out where we want to go to eat. Let's not eat too early because I bet you there's, it's going to be packed. We're right downtown. Uh, so I'm like, okay, while well, we're sitting here, why don't I take a couple edibles, right? Yeah, so yeah. I got these, uh, I is, got is it these, legal uh, in Missouri? I don't believe so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah! 
awesome! Uh, very much like the guitarist of U2. Sure. So <laughs> I, I am. I, I, t- I take a few. Adam Clayton, took, right? Yeah, I took. I took a, a one too many, probably. Okay. So right. we go to dinner, and right as we like sit down and are getting our. Does, does your wife know ready, that you took the edibles? What's up? Did your wife know that you took the edibles? Yes. And was yes. she was I, she was I, she fine I, with I, it, or did you get a dirty look? She was fine. Okay. She, I, I gave her one. It tastes good. Oh. If you just have one, it doesn't do anything. So I had three. So here's that's where I went wrong. I should have just done two. So we're eating at the this sushi restaurant, and the whole time I'm just kind of like getting there. I'm not quite peaking yet, right? And then I'm texting a family friend of mine, a mom, like, hey, she's from St. Louis. Like, hey, what, you know, where should we go to eat breakfast tomorrow, blah, blah, blah. Is that she the goes, one that oh. kisses you on the lips? No, no, no. It's okay. not that one. It's a different one. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny that you bring that up. Yes. Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> That's Wendy. Wendy kisses me on the lips. This is Kristen. So Kristen's from St. Louis, and then she's, we're just texting back and forth. While, like, after I'm done eating, and she goes, you should, guys should check out the city museum. It's open late on the weekends. I looked it up. I'm like, okay, it's open till 11 on the weekends. I've heard things about this museum. It's got like a playground or something like for adults or something. I don't know. I wasn't sure. Jason, you had mentioned that you liked it a lot before. Now, this is not a museum. Let's be clear here. Right, Jason? It's not a museum. No. It's not a museum. It's is this the one with the slide museum. that goes like down like three stories on like rollers. The slide is rollers, five stories. There, there's a yeah. ten story slide, and, and there is like a two story roller. There's slide. like a stage, and yep. there's yeah. There's, there's an incredible amount of things there. Yeah. So here's the thing: if you are under the influence of cannabis products and have never been there, and it is dark outside, first of all, impossible to find the entrance. <laughs> We walked around the building for probably 20 to 25 minutes trying to figure out <laughs> how to get in. Yeah, yeah. Okay? Yeah. Now, we finally figure it out. As we're about to go in, there are these three high school-aged girls, and they go, these little white girls, hey, um, we drove a long way to get here, and apparently you need to be 18 to get uh, in. There we go. This is, this is what I called for. Okay. So, so... I mean, stuff for like, I'm like not really understanding. I'm kind of high. And I'm like, uh, she's like, do you think you could buy us one? And I, keep in mind, I've never been to this place. I don't understand how it works. Buy us one? I go, buy you one? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just picturing Kevin High doing all this. <laughs> <laughs> and Steph's just looking at me like, because she's expecting me to do the talking. Of course, I'm like, I don't think I look old enough. And then I just turn around and walk away, and two of the three girls started cracking up because I think that they think that I think that they thought I meant like I don't think I look eighteen, which <laughs> clearly I do. They gave me the Mister <laughs> Mister thing, but like I don't think I look great band. To be their father, basically, like realistically, I definitely don't. But right, still, still, <laughs> we. So I'm just like, sorry, I don't think I look old enough. <laughs> and then I just went it. So we finally <laughs> found the entrance. We go in there, and then first off, boom, a room full of mirrors. And I'm like, all right, I'm I'm, uh, peeking. I'm uh, I'm, I'm about, I'm tripping blades right now, okay? Right. Uh, But I I didn't show it yet. And then I'm like, okay, we just keep walking. And then it's like just this giant maze, and we didn't know what to expect. uh, Usually, if I was in the right mind, I would say to somebody at the door, like, Hey, what the hell do we do here? Like a map. <laughs> Where's the map? Here. What do we do? Yeah. Well, we didn't see a map at all uh, the entire time. Um, and we're just walking and, and stuff's like, this isn't really a museum. And I was like, yeah, it's not. And there's a bunch of like middle schoolers just running around and farting around, whatever. And it, it, then I'm like, we get to like these dark places and I'm freaking out. I'm just like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> What, what's the deal? Do we what's the deal to, with these rooms? Yeah, and I'm like, do, do, let's just keep going up every stairs that we see, I guess, and then get lost, and then that's fun to find your way back out. I guess that's what it is or something. Yeah. So that's basically what we did, and we just kept going up, 
and then finally we got to like the part where it's like stairs and it looks like like at nighttime it's so fucking scary it's just like this very dark place and there's a bunch of people screaming and so i'm like all right let's go down 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 and so we went down and at the end it's you like end up in this like cave yeah like this enchanted cave or right from like this is the worst fucking part because <laughs> <laughs> because both of us are like i just want to get out of here stuff's like you're an idiot she said you're acting like an r word at one point which was funny and i said yeah sorry and then we finally found our way out and then finally <laughs> got an uber back to the to the hotel now, and was, at that point it was like nine forty-five, and i just watched the rest of the aew paper where, where did you shit then oh what do you mean you, you shit at the hotel oh yes okay oh, i'll say i don't know if you yeah. shit in the city museum no, 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 no. Well, I did. Um, I did, but at that point, it had uh, gotten better. I was like pretty much empty. Okay. I mean, we had just <laughs> we had we had just gone out to eat, but I was still like okay. That stuff that <clears throat> didn't pass right through me. Sushi, sushi usually gives me pretty solid solid dumps. So like that was part of the decision making process of where we should eat too. So so uh, was, yeah. was was it, during this whole thing at the museum was Stephanie high at all as well? Or I mean, she did no, take one. No, no, nope. it didn't Neither do nothing. Like, no. She had two Michelob Ultras at the game. But, and one edible. He said, which does nothing. Yeah. yeah. He says you got to have a couple to get it moving. So you're, not, you're, yeah. you're, you're wasting your money on the edibles because they're not strong enough. She said, he, he said it oh. tastes good. Oh, no, no, no. I'm not. It, well, it no, you're not. Bag. But... They're little tiny things, and it comes in a bag with like 30 of them. So. How, yeah. how much does that cost? Eh, 20, 20 bucks. Really? Okay. He brought, he brought, is yeah. that the one you brought over to Karaoke Biggie? Correct. All yeah. right. All right. Yeah. yeah. I didn't see I that. Had two yeah. flavors. I didn't these see are, that. These ones that I have now are watermelon. The you ones that I you get your, your ass back on the horse and start uh, being the engineer for that show. Why didn't they just leave to like a little like like leaving cookies for Santa Claus? Well, Blake. The, the, the problem there is Blake just doesn't like me. I think that's what it is. I think Blake's got to lose about twenty pounds if he want to look like Santa Claus. So <laughs> that's why he didn't leave him for you. Wow. Do you guys like my new uh, goatee? <laughs> yeah, yeah. The relief, the 2000, what was it? 2005 relief pitcher? Yeah, yeah, that's what it looked like, yeah. <laughs> hey, um, the City Museum is one of my favorite places. It's It's yeah. got an unbelievable Have amount of Have you ever went cool there dark, during the dark? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'll, I'll go there for like four or five hours at a time. Really? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It's incredible. I, I really want to go again. Uh, during the day, mm-hmm. and in my right, and in my right mind, and they have there's a roof too, and there's a um, yeah. a, a it's fer- on fire. The, the roof is on fire constantly, and there's a yeah. uh, Ferris wheel up there, and there's a bunch of great shit. It's an, it's an awesome yeah. place. It said like the roof is open like outside, so uh, I mean it was a nice day outside. So well, let me yeah, ask you I, this: I definitely want to go back. Yeah. Um, first of all, that's awesome you did that. I was excited to hear what because I've never been there stoned, and so I was excited to hear <laughs> yeah. what that sounded like. But I also, <laughs> aside from that. I want to say that uh, you have got me obsessed with the song "Alone" by Heart. You're welcome. You, you you did a power ballad on a recent episode of Karaoke Biggie. If, if you're listening to the show here at Couch Pilots, go back, listen to episode 110. I believe it's called "Dude, Dude, You're Getting Adele." Correct. <laughs> like the Adele, yeah. the singer, and yeah. um, not the computer. Uh, no, Adele. Okay. Well, she started. Yeah. I, I think there's a mythology behind that. They, they unload during the show, but anyway, Kevin mm-hmm. belts out. An unbelievable rendition of Hearts Alone, and mm-hmm. it has me in love and with Blake Kevin. Is never going to be sick of hearing about it. How's oh, is he sick of hearing about it? Does I he mentioned hate it? it to him one time when he came downstairs uh, the last time we recorded, and he was like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah, I, I get it." Yeah, yeah, he's it. <laughs> it was incredible. I loved it. I'm not doing that to egg on Blake at all. I didn't know he had that. Uh, no, here's no, no, no. He, here's the thing: is is I was like, you know, that was really good. He's like. I was only trying. <laughs> I, I loved it. Yeah. He, no, but but here's a this is this the thing about Kevin. He I'm trying to give him a compliment, right? I'm like, hey, you did a great job, and he like just brushes that compliment off totally by going, oh, I, I was I wasn't trying very hard. He can't accept compliments because he's so yeah, it's aw- he, very bad at that. It's, he, it's depression. No, he's just saying he's so awesome. He's like, oh, you're the greatest thing you've ever heard in your life. Oh, I wasn't even trying when I did. Kevin, um, I've been listening <laughs> to the point where I know the backup singing parts, and uh, I, I think we need to go to the basket case and sing that. Oh, hell 
Oh, yeah. I would love nothing more than to do that. All right. That'd be fantastic. Okay. We'll let you go. Yeah. Thank you for answering the phone and, and, and regaling us. What's the pilot us. today? Real quick. The, the pilot yeah. is Mrs. Sundance. Oh, okay. It's an hour uh, and a half long. Good luck. I think you're doing one soon where I actually played a headless corpse in it. But you can get into that. Um, oh, Shivers? Uh, get into it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Shivers is next week. You played the headless okay. corpse in that. Yeah, yeah. So just, just, just let you know. If, if you guys need any insight, just, just let me know. I appreciate it very hey, much. Uh, Kevin, thanks a lot. I love your wife. Yep. Okay, thank you. Love your wife, too. Goodbye. <laughs> Great guy. Great guy. Oh, boy, that was wonderful. Um, was, you know what? Uh, first of all, kids, do edibles. That's what I got out of that. It was do to edibles. Me, the show's been going on for a while so far. I think that's what I've gotten out of it so far. How about you? Yeah, for sure. Ladies and gentlemen, the captains have turned on the fast Uh, today we discuss the pilot episode of Mrs. Sundance from the year of our Lord, 1900 at 74. Great year. Very good year. Um, I was negative one. Mm-hmm. Actually, to be honest with you, if you do the math... Five, eight, mm. Ooh, so my mom was probably like a... Like, uh, 15 to 20 days pregnant with me. She had just been pumped. She she You're, just been... My, my, my dad soiled her oats all over... Is the, that what that means? Yeah. Okay. Soiled her oats. He pumped the hell out of your mom. He pumped the hell out of her. He filled her up. Yeah. At, at 17... Topped her off. At 17, he was... he Well, at 16, she, he was begging the shit out of her at 16. So, you're, so, you're, so your dad was 16? No. My mom was 16. And how old was your dad? Uh, 17? Hell yeah. Yeah. So he was he was they already had one kid and they're like fuck it we we let's well, do it. your mom already had a kid at sixteen yeah she was fifteen when she high had five it. that shit <laughs> damn so your dad double pumped her yeah at, at the ages of like sixteen and seventeen yeah I would that's got to be insane right like have, having a kid she if had you a kid saw at, his hair and mustache you would be like yeah that's insane that somebody okay, would have okay. sex with first him. Of, uh, I was gonna say my first mom, of all my mom was super hot I, I would say my mom was at eight. Back then, really? No, I'd love I've to seen, see some pictures. I've of your seen mom. pictures. She was an eight for sure. No, no doubt. Your dad was probably a piece of ass too. But um, so she's she's fifteen when she has uh, your brother. Yeah, that's why he's so fucked and, up. And then there's a second kid right after that. Right, and then oh my, and God. then right after that kid is born, uh, about six to eight months to a year later. Yeah, they like we can't stand each other. <laughs> yeah, did, did she get her insides all tore up so she can't have any more kids? Uh, I don't think that's what it was. Oh, she had to finish outside. What? You have to pull out. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I was like, that's weird. <laughs> you have outside, to, like you have to go outside and ejaculate on the on the yard. <laughs> There's one patch of grass that's growing real well here. It's true green. Um, <laughs> that's how I think of 1974. Anyway, this would be a good time to call her mom, but I'm not going to. Yeah, we shouldn't. Um, but that that's not the only way the way I think about 1974. There are other things that happened. How old were you? I was negative one. Um, negative seven. Oh, so. Your yeah. mom and dad didn't even know each other. No, 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 yeah. not at all. Uh, let's think about things that happened back in 1974, other than your dad filling up your mom with his uh, semenation. Let's go back to 1974. In, in our, our minds. minds. And we'll, to do so, we'll talk about a few things that happened that year. And we do this part of the show so we can properly get in the mindset right. of the of the pilot that we're discussing today. We're in 2020. Right. Okay, it's Bernie year, right? Oh, I'm burning, baby. I'm burning for Bernie. I'm burning for you. B- I'm burning, I'm burning, I'm, I'm burning, burning for you. you. Anyway, in 1974, there's a lot of things we didn't have back then, so you can't be like, oh, I'm going to judge this pilot based on 2020. In 1974, we did not have go-karts. That was the... That was the first thing. We didn't have go. Yeah. How are you gonna how are you gonna rate this pilot mm-hmm. with the thought of what go karts are? I know for a fact that year we, we had an idea mm-hmm. of what go karts were and what they could be. But we, no one was able to execute that idea yet, right. though. Uh we also didn't have scooter cage ball in, in schools. We so much so to I don't I don't even know what that is to this day. You don't know what it is? Did you say scooter cage ball? Yeah, you yeah, probably you probably is. called it something else. Actually, you're young enough to probably, probably baseball. It, 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 it was banned. No, it was probably banned by the time. Banned? But banned. I played the uh, uh, it's banned. cornet. <laughs> Jim cornet? Yeah, I played the Jim cornet when I was in fourth grade. Uh, scooter cage ball was, uh, there was a, like, uh, a plastic red uh, plate with rollers, mm-hmm. okay, and you had to have one knee on it at all time, and you could scoot across, you know. And there was a giant ball, 
like a giant, like, you know, like the dodgeballs? I love this so far. Right, but think of it as like... Like a yoga ball. No, like bigger than that. It was it was huge. The size of a Buick. The size of a Buick. Okay. And then it was, you played, you played kind of like soccer hockey with it. It was called Scooter Cage Ball. Many people broke fingers. Soccer hockey. So it was on ice. Well, it was on the gym floor, but the style was soccer and I, soccer and soccer and ice. Soccer. <laughs> Stocker Channing and ice. Ooh, baby, that's a combo. Anyway, we didn't have that. Yeah, that wasn't around then. You don't know what they did have? What? March 8th, the final I'm, episode. I'm not done, though. Oh, what else you got? We didn't have Band-Aids. Okay. Well, I'm just putting it out there. Because people are going to listen to this and be like, it's 2020, I'm all about Bernie. Yeah. And they're going to be like, I'm going to judge this pilot. And I'm like, oh, this pilot's shit. You go back there. Think about Band-Aids, asshole. Go back there. In, in, your, in, your, in, mind, in your mind. mind, mind, mind eye, mind. Mind's eye. March 8th, something that happened that year. The final episode of the American television series, The Brady Bunch, airs. The Brady Bunch. Bunch the Brady, Brady Bunch. Bunch. Awesome! Good lord, that's loud. <laughs> Jesus um, Christ. I'm not, I don't like The Brady Bunch. It's it, like, like, The Brady Bunch fucking sucks, right? Um, The acting was bad, right. uh, but nostalgic-wise, I can't say that it sucks. I, I mean, nostal- I mean, the... Again, they the were act- they were style icons. I say that right now. And it, when I watch it now, compared to like when I was younger, like I know that a bunch of them had sex together, so it makes it more interesting. That's why. That's how I like to watch. And it, that one, that, that the architect guy was gay. Yeah, the dad. Never would have thought that. By who, the way, how smooth he was. Did you? Who is the most attractive of the Brady Bunch? Um, now or when I was younger? Both. When I was younger, Cindy. Okay. And the, uh, the tiny little pigtail girl. Yeah, when I was little. Yeah. yeah. All right. And uh, when I got older, obviously for legal reasons, it was Marsha. Uh huh. Yeah, my uh, Greg for me. Oh. Uh, March 11th, Rhino Store gives people five cents a piece to take home Danny Bonaducci's album. You hear that guy? I know who Danny Bonaducci is. Who from, is he? Uh, the the Patriots family. Yeah, yeah, the Patriots family. He was he the, was the drummer, the redhead. He was a little boy, right? And it's it, just a little boy. I feel. I feel like there's anytime there's like a young um, star of like television or something. Like, hey, you know what you should do? You should make an no, album. I'm, yeah. And they're like, why would I ever do that? I'm an actor. It's like because people would buy. Well, the they album. did that because the the other guy from the Partridge family was very successful in his music. Yeah. What was that guy's name? Uh, Rick. Oh. Rick. Ricky. Ricky Marks. Rick Marks. That's yeah. right. Yeah. He was. I love. Um, I love. But, but Rick Marks had some good albums, though. Oh, for sure. But Dandy Duchy, apparently, the sales were non existent to where they're giving people a buffalo nickel a piece to take it home with them. That's great. <laughs> kind of this podcast. Like, people. Would, I, w- I would pay people five cents to listen I'll, to this. For sure. I would, too. Except 34 people, because 34 people made me win. I don't want to hear that. Those numbers are small. We didn't and talk sad. about it. Like, what did you think? Like, how would you rate. How would you rate my speech? It was, from a, great, one it was seven. a great speech. Thank you. I like how it says final draft across the top. <laughs> Say that's uh that's putting it out there that there were multiple drafts of it. <laughs> and why did you why did you use a sharpie? <laughs> anyway, I don't know. It was it was a great speech. You did a great job because it was so good at the end. I was like, oh, this is the final draft. So Congratulations like, to you. Thank you, you. You won almost fair and square. I, I completely secede. You are the captain of choice. Thank I, I, you. I tip my cap and hat to you. Muchos gracias. And also with you. March 21st, uh, attempt made to uh, kidnap Princess Anne in London's Pall Mall, which is not a, a giant pack of cigarettes. Ironically, I smoke Pall Malls. Um, which, which, which princess is this? Prince An- princess Anne. Who's, who's the mom and dad of that one? I don't know. Probably some like incestuous blue blood shit. Was that before Diana? 1974, I would say so. Yeah. All right. Yeah, I think Diana was there like was, there was early somebody 80s. Somebody tried to kidnap her? Yeah. Have Unsuccessful? Ever, uh, w- without success, correct. Um, Who was it? I mean, like, how did they do it? I don't know. I, 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 I have one sentence here of notes. Really? I, well, I mean, I, <laughs> you're going to bring this to the table. And I can then look be, into it. No, it's fine. Um, do you, I'm busy. What do you want to do uh, with... Uh, you ever, you're, has anyone ever tried to kidnap you? No, people have done bad stuff to me, but always give me back. What would you What would you do if someone tried to kidnap? Like if someone's like, uh, I would love it. You You would love it, like, right, right? 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 now, or when I was a kid, like kidnap me at twelve or kidnap me at like forty five. Your current age, yeah. I I would be fine with it. Take me, Calgon. Take me away. Yeah, for sure. Where Where would you want them to take you? Would you want to be put into sex slavery? 
Yeah, that that that's probably the best place for me. I mean, I'm I'm not very good at cooking. I right. I refuse to do my own laundry. A lot of times, people who are kidnapped are forced to do laundry and cooking. But you say you would like to do the sex. <laughs> Well, of course, that's the only thing I'm good at. Yeah, yeah. No, you're a, you're a great 100 plus. You're a great a fucker. We all know that. I don't know about you, but I'm safely and securely back in 1900 ad 74. I am. I, I loved it. It was great. Why do we choose to watch Mrs. Sundance? Uh, there's three simple criteria that we use uh, on this show. One, it was a pilot that never went to series, whether it aired or not is irrelevant. And number two, we had to find it on the internet. And number three, it had to be free, baby. Yes, that's exactly you say free? right. I say free too. You can find the entire episode of Mrs. Sundance by subscribing to Couch Pilots and SoundCloud, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or your favorite podcast app of choice, and then simply click on one of our classically blue links in our show notes, or go to YouTube. Blake? You know what to do, Tube. <laughs> I like that. You, you did it better that time. I, um, I've been doing a lot of cardio uh, vascular. I can see. I What's can that? See. I can tell. My lungs are bigger. Yeah, you can see. I got big lungs. Oh, and that sweater, you can still see them. You can still see my lungs. It's a nice sweater. Summary of the pilot. The girlfriend of the Sundance Kid is on the run with a price on her head when she hears rumors that the Sundance Kid may still be alive. A plus. Wow. Okay. No, that's that's exactly what you need to know. Yeah, that's pretty much that's the a great summary of the program, and I agree. That's a that's an A plus summary. That's more information than I knew when I pushed play. Well, what do you know about the uh, the Sundance Kid? If someone said that to you, what what pops in your head? I, I think of Old West. Right. I think of robbing trains. Yes. I think of Butch. Yes. Uh, and, and and Sundance and David Cassidy. He yeah. was the Partridge guy. Yeah. <laughs> so Butch and David Cassidy and the right. Sundance Kid. No, and I know they robbed banks for the poor. Mm-hmm. And it was a they Western. wore tights, right? Did they wear tights? Um, I think bo- so. one, was, one was a fox, I do believe. Mm-hmm. Correct. Um, yeah, so that, I mean, that's basically all I knew. I'm not going to waste my mouth asking you if you've oh. seen the film, uh, the cinema called Butch Sunday, Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid. Uh, with Paul Newman, Robert Redford? Yeah. Uh, no. <laughs> You're getting pretty uppity there for someone who, who hasn't seen it still. Um, I'm uppity because I knew two people that were in the film. <laughs> that is pretty good. That's, like, that's an iconic film. I, I think that it is. I, yeah. I've never seen it. A lot of those old westerns. I was listening to something oh, today. Oh, you've never about, seen it, have you? I, I never claim to. I'm not riding my high horse pun. What's your claim to fame? My claim to fame is I can uh, do this with my hands. <laughs> and if you give me some lotion, God damn it, I'll go all night long. <laughs> I bet. Uh, but there's like like uh, the good, the bad, the ugly. You know, a fistful of dollars, a few dollars more. There's a lot of old school uh, westerns, John Wayne, Clint Eastwood, otherwise that I, I've just I have not seen. I don't really have a lot of interest in it, per, honestly. Oh, uh, well, I was at the I was bartending at the Moose one uh, as you do one Saturday night, and uh, there wasn't too many people there. And one of the guys is like, "Hey, turn it on this channel," and it was like the old west channel, and it was on closed captions. And he's like, "Ah, oh, you ever seen this movie? This is what happens, and this is you know." And he, he was like going like scene for scene. Yeah. And I was like, no. He goes, what do you mean you never seen Some it? Some of these old timers love that shit. They revel in it. Because, yeah. You know why? Because they were little kids when they came right. out. And that's seared in their brain. When they came out as gay. What? They, when they were little, they came out as gay. And they were watching these westerns. And that's why it's monumental. And that's why they remember it. Uh, interesting facts, I guess. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Interesting Facts. This is the part of the show where Jason scours the internet to find facts about this pilot that you may not know. He does a hard job. He does it he does it well. So one thing I want you to do is not tell anybody your opinions of these facts. These are facts. He's found them. There's nothing we can do about it. Give him these facts, let him have these facts, and don't taint someone else's experience by sharing your thoughts on these facts. Thank you. Thank you. I do know what hard times are. Mm, mm, mm. <sighs> okay. Um, interesting facts. Oops. <laughs> that was kind of that was kind of cool. Uh, release date January fifteenth, nineteen seventy four. January fifteenth. Correct. Okay. You seem confused by that. No. Fact. Yeah, it's fact. Fact. You seem confused. Uh, taglines. We don't always get a tagline for a pilot, but here's one. After Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid were killed dead in a hail of lead, she was uh, still alive, left still alive with a price on her 
ten thousand dollar on her hide. Okay, maybe you should read that again to where it makes sense. They died in Bolivia, by the way. After Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid were killed dead in a hail of lead, she was left alive with a price of ten thousand dollars on her hide. Much better. Okay, <laughs> I had to find my circadian. Did you know? Rhythm. Did you know that they were killed in Bolivia? That's an interesting fact. Um, I didn't know that, but that was I, I found that out from the show, but I didn't know that before. <laughs> Claudette Nevins, who starred as Mrs. Lee, just died on February twentieth of this year, just about a week and not not even a week and a half ago. Is that the lady that was talking about the council at the very beginning? Yeah, I believe that was the old lady in the beginning. Yeah, yes. okay. she, All right. she just died. Wow, fact. She, we've had some people die like. After we've like done these shows, <laughs> oh, we've had some people die. All right, yeah, for sure. It's that known as the the couch pilot's curse. <laughs> but but for somebody to die pre release, yeah, yeah. that's pretty amazing. Yeah, I would never want to die just by like a month, just like about a month and a half. And the, but the thing is, like you think, oh my god, we could have talked to her. We probably wouldn't talk to her. A lot of these old people, a lot of these people in this are either dead or so old that they or they, alive. Have, they don't. They're either dead or alive. It's one of the two. <laughs> Uh, stars Elizabeth Montgomery as mm. Etta Pace. Elizabeth uh, is best known as uh, somebody from Bewitched. Samantha. She was she was a beautiful. She woman, was a smoke show, right? She, she was had a the very cutest little woman. nose. It was that that nose. No, but her nose was amazing. She was she was a beautiful woman. Um, honestly, the only thing I have ever known her from was Bewitched. That's it. Wow. Well, yeah. Fact. Right. That's, yeah. Um, co-stars Elizabeth Montgomery and uh, Robert Foxworth began a relationship around the time that this movie was filmed, living together for almost 20 years. Is that be- Jack Maddox? Yes, before marrying in 1980 or 1993. That is amazing. This show brought them together and made, they made love? That's absolutely right. Yeah, that's great. Um, she was, uh, she died like two years later after that. She died in 1995. Oh, after they got, they were together for twenty years. Then they got married. She got married. She, they died about two years or so after they got married. Do you think she knew she was dying? I don't know. Probably. So they were. He was fucking her for like eighteen years before he had to pay for anything. Twenty. Twenty man. God. High five that shit. I've, high five Jack Maddox. Maddox for life. When Etta Place and Jack Maddox reach the abandoned schoolhouse where Etta taught, she sees an old bicycle leaning bicycle. against the bicycle. Bicycle. I love to ride my bicycle. bicycle. Is that? Oh, is that it? Yeah, I, you kind of screwed up the melody part of it. Oh, I thought there was. Um, yeah, I screwed it up. Uh, it was, anyway, let's, let's do it again. Okay. I love to ride my bicycle. Interesting fact. Uh, she sees an old bicycle leaning against the railing. If you listen to the music here, you can hear raindrops keep falling on my head, playing slowly. It was the theme song to Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid and played extensively throughout the scene where Etta and Butch ride this very bike. Fact. fact. So much fact. End of interesting facts. So you're saying that in the movie Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid, mm-hmm. Etta and Butch ride this specific bike. No, no. The Sundance Kid. Yeah, that's what I said. We got Butch Cassidy over here. Oh, yeah, I know. And you got Sundance Kid over here. But in the movie, Etta and Sundance rode this specific bike? Yes, that's correct. That's interesting. Yeah, and you can say so because Interesting Facts is over. Twitter responses. Twitter responses. Twitter responses. I wonder if Jason got some Twitter responses. As previously hinted, these people are all dead. So we, I definitely don't have any Twitter responses, but I do have 105 minutes on the clock to talk about this film. We're not putting 105 minutes on the All clock. Right. Well, let's go ahead and start. Um, on a train, you got some fellers making bullets, and then they are um, they're using it like a sepia. Is that what's called a sepia filter, where everything looks old timey and orange? Right, like orange and brown kind of look. This yeah. must be their their attempt at saying, Here, "Here's a flashback or something." I think this is like to uh, make you pay attention. Like they're like, okay, your eyes need to pay attention. I don't understand this part because at right the, the train stops. Some lawman or a bounty hunter or something has at a pace, which is Elizabeth Montgomery, and he's ready to hand her over to some other dude. But that dude declines and says, "Let her go." Right? Yeah, because that's not. Yeah, that's not really her. Oh, it wasn't her. No, I, I don't know. I that that's why the that's why the beginning was confusing to me. The 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 posse guy, the head head mm. posse guy, Syringo or something. Yes, 
he goes there. He goes in and and he's like, and this other lawman's like, here's your, here's the person you want. And she's got her head down like a like a prostitute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, <laughs> he lifts it up and it's not her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's like, that's not the one I want. I didn't, here's, okay, here's I didn't know that. Fifty bucks for your trouble. Yeah, I didn't know. Okay, so that that does clear up a lot for me right from the start. Um, <laughs> there, there, the, there's a ten thousand dollar reward for Etta Pace, who's also known as Mrs. Mrs. Sundance, Sun- and she is the girlfriend of the Sundance kid. Okay, I'm sorry. No, it turns color, and we see a woman looking out the window, and we find out she's a teacher. This is Mrs. Sundance, but everybody knows her as Mrs. Johnson. And I'm it's sorry, Miss Johnson. <laughs> Your husband's dead. I didn't, like, I looked at this woman and I thought, okay, this is Elizabeth Montgomery. I'm pretty sure this is her. She's an attractive lady. I recognize her from Bewitched. And when they called her Miss Johnson, I didn't know what was going on yet. Oh, no, I didn't. Well, no, I I take that back. I knew what was going on because I saw the wanted poster. I was like, oh, okay, that looks a lot like the person. So she's she's in Cahoot, incognito. Yeah, she's, she's in hiding. She's... Um, a teacher in a small town. Uh, she's uh, got some kid in her classroom. He, she, he takes off, and then Mrs. Lee arrives. Who is dead right now, R.I.P.? She just died, and she's like, um, I don't know, she's in charge of the school or works for the city or what, but she basically comes in and says, hey, you can work here for another year. She says, but I, I, this, you, you act odd. You, right. when, when, when the train you, comes, yeah. when it's nighttime, you you act weird. Yeah, you, I don't know always, what's going on with you, but the council says you can teach for another year, and she and, and she's like, why, why are you acting weird? And uh, she does not give it up. No, she's like, she's like, I, I'm just here to teach. Yeah, I'm just here to teach. So uh, ba- basically, uh, in this small town, a, a western show uh, comes to, from the town. Everyone in town is excited. They're running to this. Like there are actually people running to this tent. It's like it's like the old like, uh, like an old Barnum circus, and, or, right? B- Barnum and Bailey. Yeah, Barnum and Bailey is what I was going to say. <laughs> but there are, people are running to this to see it. You know, what's it like? It's like an old tent, like you'd see like on Barlow and Bailey Circus. Yeah, yeah. I love Barlow and Bailey. Barley's and Bailey's. <laughs> <laughs> These the signs uh, of the tent mention Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid. Yeah, so it's like, it's like a play mm-hmm. about Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid. Yeah. She 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 goes in there. She's watching it. Uh, it's it's really cheesy and fake. It, it's it like reenacts them like ro- train robbing and stuff. And there's even the lady playing at a pace while Edda's in the crowd watching. Yeah, it's, it's meta. Yeah, very, oh, very meta. Meta Edda. It's a, it's a, <laughs> it's hashtag uh, meta Edda. Uh, anyway, Edda uh, sees lawmen or, or just like familiar to her or otherwise suspicious people kind of looking out over the crowd, and she gets nervous and she disappears. Yeah, so she uh, she she gets out of there that night. Edda dresses up in a disguise and heads toward that very same train we saw earlier. Waits. Um, she dresses up kind of like manly. Yeah, like a fella. Yeah. She's she's waiting for a little bit. Then she jumps on the train. Uh, she must think that there is like too much heat in town now. Sure. When when we talk about heat, we talk about the posse. Hell yeah. And so she's on the train, and then this guy jumps on, and we come to find out that is Jack Maddox, mm-hmm. and he's like, "Come here, boy." You know, he sees her. He sees her in like the shadows. Yeah. He's like, "You hungry, boy? Come here, boy." And then uh, her tits fall out. He sees her. Glistening tits. There's a lot of cleavage here. There's a lot of glistening tits, and, and he's I was like, like oh. "Oh, yeah." I was like, w- he sh- "She's gonna have to fight this hobo off." That's what I thought. Like, this hobo is gonna try to accost her sexually, and she's gonna have to fight him off. What I was thinking it was like, "Oh, okay, he's gonna ask her to marry him, and then she's gonna do everything." He's she's gonna he's gonna do everything she says for the rest of his life. <laughs> a hobo marriage. <laughs> he's like hey, hobo it, marriage. Before he knows anything about this girl, he's like, hey, I used to work for a bunch Butch uh, Cassidy and Sons. Yeah, he's, he, with yeah he's, trying, he's trying to impress her. Yeah, right. And then he realizes it's a woman, and he comes on to her, and he, he she shows him her gun. She's like, okay, you know what? We're both in this train. We're, we're both of I us should not be here. Guns. I got tits and guns. Don't fudge with me. Right. Um, the next morning, a posse is coming to look for Jack. Apparently, he stole some bread or something. So the two of them hightail it the hell out of the train and head into some tall grass. Yeah, in swampland. They're in yeah. the swampy lands. Uh, some horses go around in the water. They can't the posse, can't, the posse, not passy. The posse can't find them. Um, Jack notices one of the guys. He's like, "Oh, that's that is the, a well-known bounty hunter." Yeah, the and, bounty hunter. And the Jack's like, R.I.P. a bounty hunter's wife. Jack doesn't. Know, who's that? The bounty hunter. Oh, oh, uh, yeah, his wife's dog? dead. Yeah, yeah. So she uh, suffocated from her own breath. I don't know if that's right. Um, so Jack's like, he's, these guys are looking for me, but he, what he doesn't know is that they're really looking for her. Sure. Right? 
So right. They, so then they steal a horse and they camp out later that night. Yeah, there's a lot of camping out. There's, oh yeah. And every time they go to camp out, uh, Jack is responsible for getting supplies. Mm. No, he's not. He's offering to go get supplies. What he's doing is he is going and talking oh, to okay. the posse. Okay. okay, we're gonna reveal that this well, order. Yeah, but we don't have much time. So uh, while Etta sleeps, uh, when the camping Jack takes her bag and he looks through it and he discovers her true identity, and then she like starts to kick the shit out of him. Oh yeah, she beats the crap out of him. And then for Jack sure. like takes his horse and heads out, and he shows up next. He's like, so uh, that, he takes off, and you're like, he got okay. his ass beat. He left. Yeah, I was thinking he's gone. That's it for him. The movie, but nope. he comes back the next day with the birds for them to eat. Right, and uh, it's because he's in cahoots with the posse. And then, right? and then Ed is like, he's like, I, I've looked through your bag. I know who you are. And so then Edda starts to talk to Jack about her memories. Yeah, she spends a lot of time like kid. reminiscing about the Sundance. And he's like, oh, well, uh, you know, she's like, they're all dead. Mm-hmm. But I, you know, they're all dead. I don't know what to do. And I'm just running for my life. And he's like, oh, well, you know, Fanny Porter. And she's like, oh, yeah, I know. He, she, he's like, she said that Sundance is still alive. They go up to this whorehouse that she runs. Uh, the best little whorehouse in Montana, <laughs> Wyoming. And she's like, uh, yeah, Sunday. Pueblo. It was in Pueblo, Colorado. Yeah. 81009. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. So um, now Edda wants to make her way to Sundance. It's like 150 miles away. And uh, Jack agrees to help her get what she needs for the trip. And this he goes is where and we, gets supplies again. This is where we find out that he's working for these people because they give him the money and the stuff that he needs to get her. Because basically what they want to do is like, during her time with the Sundance Kid, they robbed a lot of places. They stashed money. Let's follow her because, of course, she's going to go to the money, try to get that. Sure. And if we follow her there, we'll get the money and we'll get her for the bounty. Right. And so he's in this uh, train car talking to the posse, and there is a guy behind him with his shirt off. Yeah, I don't know why he's got his shirt did, off the whole time. Did you write that down at all? It's, it's seared into my memory. I didn't write it down, but it's in my it's head. It's very odd. Like the other, all the all the other posse guys that are interviewing him – are in suits. I think there was probably some hot shit happening before Jack stepped in the room. It was weird, and I'm going to bring it up later. All right, good. Um, so he's like, um, if uh, if he's working for the bounty hunters, the bounty hunter. I'm thinking, why did he go through her bag? You know, why? Because like, why did he need to know who she was? I, I think he was going through her bag to try to find stuff to steal or find clues of where she was wanting to go. Okay, uh, that one for sure. The first one, not. But- but, like, he should know who she is already. No, he does. Okay. He knows who she is, but he's trying to find clues. Blue's clues. I see. Jack and Anna. Uh, I'm surprised that wasn't on your top five for the last season. Uh, ja- oh, that would have been great. I don't know about that. Jack Magenta's and Edda- coming over. Magenta's coming over. Oh, please stop. Uh, Jack and Edda head towards Casper the next morning at camp, and Edda makes Jack take a bath so she can pound off. No. Or- she, she does it basically to she say... She knows something's up. Yeah, she's like, why would you, someone I just met, come with me all the way up here? She has him naked, in the water, gun in her hand. She's basically got him at, at her at her whim. She can sure. do whatever she wants and get answers from him. But um, he's he has to answer the questions, but he comes And he's only some, washing his hair. That's the only thing he washes. I, I get under those arms pretty good. Yeah, right between I, the legs. I, yeah, for sure. But he comes up with some bullshit that she kind of buys, right? Yeah, I, I guess she does. I, like This is the first point where you're like... She knows what's up, and then she buys this bullshit, and, she, and then she kind of backs off. Yeah, and you're like, "Oh, we are. We already know right now we know because of the half naked man." So um, then they come across a place out in the what the big wide open. I don't know where they're just running around the yeah. plains. Yeah, and they come across this house that belongs to her friend Ben, and he's super surprised to see her. They all have dinner, and he 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 really loves this woman so much that his wife is crazy jealous. Oh right? yeah, she's crazy jealous. Because she knows who he is. Yeah. Or she knows who she is. And we don't find this out until later on. But she, they're, they're poor, right? They're in, on the homestead. They're yeah. poor. And there's a $10,000 bounty on. That's that's like he, set for life back yeah, then. Yeah. And, and so the, the wife's like, why don't you turn this bitch in? Why are you, you know, first of all, why are you flirting with her? For, second of all, why am I making her dinner? And third of all, why are you? You know what? What's the deal? She's pissed. So she's. Uh, they all have dinner. Typical woman. And she's like, um, Ben's like, she's like to Ben, how do we get to the hole in the wall? And he's like, well, I don't know. And everyone involved who knows is dead, except for one dude. So they go off to get him. They bring him back to the place. And in that time, the wife's sent her son off to go get the art, the uh, military, or the uh, local the posse, the, the fuzz. Yeah, and, and so 
Uh, the guy that only guy left that might know is Walt. And he is super out of it. He is super old and yeah. senile, and he's also super drunk. And I love Walt. You're a Walt boy. I love it. I think he did a great job. So the fuzz is coming down the road, and and uh, and the kids. The kid's name is Garth. Oh, is it really? Yeah, I didn't realize that. Um, Ben's like, oh my god, they're coming. So he says, get hey Jack and Etta, get out of here. And then he goes up and runs to them and says, hey. Go this way. They just went that way. He points them in the, the wrong direction. Which is the opposite way. And, and they take Ben, and that's that's the last we see of Ben. Yeah, and, and and right before he leaves, he looks at his wife. He's like, "Yeah, I, I'm. I'll go with you guys and answer your questions because uh, uh, hiding and abetting is, you know, uh, punishable by hanging." Yeah, he's like, "I want to help you guys out." And he, he's, but he, he's he, blowing he, smoke. He, but. Yeah, well, he's obviously blowing smoke, and he's also like giving a big fuck you to his wife. He's like, yeah, hey, you little cunt. Well, um, Jack and Ed are right on. They come across her old home where she lived with Sundance. It's abandoned now. And then they set up shop for the night there. She sees some of her old poems that she wrote, and she reads them to Jack. And then Jack tries to convince Edda not to go to the hole in the wall. Right. Jack is Jack is a... He's not like part of the posse. He's this... He's kind of a he low-level criminal scumbag. He was in prison. They took him out of prison and said, hey, we'll take you out of prison. You do this for us. Mm-hmm. He does it, but then, of course, he falls in love because and, she's a fucking bombshell. He's got a conscience, man. He, he's he got a cock- coxious. I, I don't know if that's how you say it. Well, but obviously, like, what's thinking? Is is his brain thinking or is his penis thinking? Probably a little, this point? little from A, a little from B. Yeah. Etta knows something is up with Jack, but she's still not letting on. She's cool, calm, and collective this whole time. She's got to be to hang out with there Sundance was, and Butch Cassidy. First off, she's he's naked and shampooing himself. Hell yeah! And she busts him out, and he she kind of lays back. And then this is another speech where she's like, mm, "Something's going on," but she still lays back. She uh, he then updates the bounty hunters again. There's the a couple bounty scenes. hunters. And then the next day, they head into the canyon and they come across more abandoned buildings. They find all the old crew buried up there. Yeah, they go. They find the hole in the wall, which is supposedly you couldn't find it. And uh, they, so they get up there, they find it, and Edda realizes for sure that not only is everyone dead, but that definitely includes Sundance. Like, whatever she's been fed is, is a line right. of bullshit. And Butch, then, Butch and uh, they, they, he died in Bolivia. Yeah. Jack regrets what he's done here, and he's like, hey, the bounty hunters are going to be here in an hour. It's about 35 minutes till that happens now. We, we have to do something. They're going to come and get us. And so the bounty hunters arrive. And she's still being cool with them. She well, she all she has is this little I think called the Dillinger. Dillinger. It's probably but, got two shots on it, that's right? But it. she's not portrayed at all. Like she doesn't feel portrayed at all. She I, well, that's it is a, a testament to her being so stoic and cool, calm and collected. But at the same time, she doesn't have time to be upset. She's got to figure out how she's going to survive this this event. And the bounty hunters arrive. They see all the graves there, and then uh, they, they come up and they start walking around. They're hiding. Jack's hiding behind a wall. Ed is inside a building. He says if they if anyone comes through that door, you shoot them no matter what. It right. doesn't matter who it is. And uh, so Jack's hiding with his like little repeater uh, rifle, and he ba-choo, kills ba-choo, one of the, the ba-choo, ba-choo. he kills one of the bounty hunters. And the others, once that happens, they start to like take their position and start to kind of flank. And, the, and all these bounty hunters have suits on, like they're in the west. They look great. It's hot in the desert, yep. and they have their suits on. They're rolling around in the gravel hey, with suits on. Hey, they're dressed to kill. Ooh, good answer. Uh, Jack kills another one through a wall when he busts through a cabin. And then he kills a third. Mm -hmm. Jack kills three of these dudes. And all you have left now is Syringo, the guy who's the leader. And then Syringo shoots Jack in the shoulder. Right through the window. Yeah, he shoots him through a window. He sees uh, Jack had just killed his third man. And Syringo's there blasting him. And then then Jack shoots Syringo as well. So, you know, they're both uh, having troubles. So Syringo pins down Etta. And uh, Jack shoots him in the back so Etta can escape. And now they've they've got Syringo kind of like pinned down in this cabin. And then Jack is not doing so hot. He got shot pretty good. Right. And he's, he's kind of chatting it up with Etta this, for, for what appears to be, and it might be, we don't know, one last time. Yeah. To me, this is the deathbed speech. I like, would think so. Yeah. He's yeah. like, I'm, I'm pouring my heart out to you because I'm about to die. I have nothing to lose. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm sorry I did this to you. I, I kind of am in love with you. And... Uh, I hope you get out of here alive. She says, thank you, basically, for everything you've done for me. Mucho, K- she said mucho gracias. That's right. She kisses him right on the mouth. Ooh. And then uh, Jack covers Etta while she makes her way to a horse, and she escaped. And we're following Etta at this point. Yeah. Out in the sunset, and behind us, we hear a bunch of gunshots. Mm-hmm. The end. Yeah. Turbulence. Please remain seated as we are now crossing a zone of turbulence. 
A Zone of Turbulence. That's the name of the game, folks. What about Sun- Mrs. Sundance didn't work? What was the problem here? Well, there's a couple problems. Uh, I I think the first thing we're going to talk well, the first thing we're going to talk about is this is expensive. Okay, okay. there's a lot of locations. Uh, there's a lot of uh, finding old Western stuff to use. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is expensive to do, and it's an hour and a half long. Is the pilot is is the regular episodes going to be half hour? No, they're they're going to be an hour. They're going to be a forty five minute show yeah. for sure, and that's yeah. expensive. Yeah, it will be. That's the first thing. Okay, is wrong. What else you got? I agree. I think that's a great point. You go ahead and go. Um, hey, hey at a pace, more like uh, oh, a, a slow pace. Am I right? Some of this did not move very quickly. There's a lot of scenes that you could have cut 10 or 15 minutes off of this show, just basically them galloping and gallivanting across the countryside. Right, but it's a Western, and, and every Western, and I, I thought about that too, mm-hmm. but like when I watched it, like it didn't seem like an hour and a half when I watched it, and I, I, I think maybe my mindset was like, okay, Westerns have a lot of scenes where people are just riding a fucking horse a bunch of, around a bunch of rocks. Yeah. Um, there was... It was very heavy on like orchestra music, yeah, which kind of was a was a turnoff because they had to fill time with no dialogue, right? You know, but uh, I understand what you're saying about like how, how I dragged along. But if you if you go into the mindset of this is a western, then it doesn't bother you. Okay, well, what else you got then? Why didn't it work? You said you had something else, right? Uh, I it didn't work because that guy had no shirt on and it freaked me the fuck out. Okay, <laughs> the creep factor. And he put his, I think he put his hands, like he was standing behind Jack when they were talking to him. Yeah. And I think he put his hands on Jack's shoulder, sh- both shoulders. And for a half naked guy to do that in the Old West just meant Jack's going to get fucked. It's super gay. Super. Yeah. It was, it was, it was a super gay moment of the film. Um, did, did you, were you unsettled by it? I, was, I wasn't unsettled, but I, it was I, odd. But I took note. Absolutely. I took yeah. note. I was like, why is that guy, why is that guy glistening bare chested? Right. <laughs> Um, okay, how about this? It didn't work because I, when I see a Western, my God, I want to see some shoot 'em ups. There was very little shoot 'em ups in this. Right, there really only was that final the, scene. The final scene for yeah. shoot 'em ups. So. Don't get me wrong, good final scene, but still, I, I want to see a little hot action in between. Sure, you no, know? I, got, I got you. Maybe there's, maybe there's a point where the posse catches up with them. Uh, well, they are, I think they catch up with her on Broadway. The posse catches catches her up on Broadway. They do catch her up then. You ever made the Kessel Run? No, I want to try though. What would you do to improve this? Um, I guess you're right. I, I mean, I didn't think about this before, but more shoot 'em ups. I, I think they're trying not to like shoot their wad on the shoot 'em ups, right? You know what I mean? Because they're going to go into a series. Um, I I don't know to improve it. Maybe less music or more appropriate music. More like twangy western cowboy music as opposed to like orchestra music that a lot of times the score it was it, wow. it, it turned me off because a lot of times i was like oh this is very like you know orchestra stuff that's not yeah yeah okay yeah i i think i like to see a little bit more action i think 45 minutes is a more appropriate time we know a lot of these 70s 80s and even into the 90s these failed pilots start off as an hour and a half movie which is exactly right. what this is but well, um, it, it was it was like 15 or 20 minutes before we understood that she was Mrs. Sundance wouldn't you say I would say so yeah um if this survived I think this is just her traveling around staying away from the police trying to find a life seeing a bunch of people that she knew through Sundance. I would love it if there was a lot of surprises. I want to see Ben again. I want to see him pop back up. Uh, maybe the Sundance kid really is alive. I, I want to see w- some of the people from the original film pop up and say, you thought I was dead. I'm not dead at all. Yeah. That that is Jack really dead? Did he die at the end? Did he get away? We don't know. We don't know. All, I, all I ever say in TV shows, your favorite character, he's not dead until you 100% see him die. Sure. Because a lot of times there'll be like little spoilers or like little, like, oh, he, I think he's dead. He died off screen, but then next season he pops back. Right. Up. Like in Magic Men, everybody thought that the main character was dead in Magic Men, but yeah, he wasn't. And Magic Men is that uh, Chanum Tating strip yeah, film, right. right? Great film. Great, great American film. You, check number two. Uh, Double XL? Yeah. Not bad. Ladies and gentlemen, as we start our descent, got, they got the name right, I'll tell you that much. Because his dick was big? He, there's uh, some huge cocks in that film. I love it. 
Um, what does the cock say? A cox's final descent. This is where we say um, other people have seen this. Other people have commented on it. Uh, we look at IMDb, and you've you've done this. Uh, you've you've cheated. Tell me what the score from IMDb is. Don't act like you don't know. I would say like a six point five. No, six point two. And oh damn it! That's from two hundred and forty different ratings, critic reviews. Uh, Clayton's Ahib dot weebly dot com says if you watch it don't expect to compare it with the famous one it's its own thing and quite a fun thing when viewed with an eye uh, receptive to fun <laughs> it has only a wobbly connection to the actual events or the people involved but i enjoyed it quite a, a lot okay that's positive viewer reviews uh hannah gives it uh two and a half out of five stars says uh liz's post bewitch career was wild and i love every minute of it this was after bewitched yeah okay uh, Lance Sh- uh, Shibi gives it three out of five stars. Says this was a lot of fun. Great story t- uh, following a captivating relationship. Solid performances all around, particularly Montgomery and Foxworth. Um, Michael May gives it two out of five stars. I'll watch anything with Elizabeth Montgomery in it, but this was disappointing. She's uh, not even really the main character, so she spends the whole movie what? reminiscing about the Sundance Kid and affecting the film's actual main character. Played by a guy from Falcon Crest. Who was the main character? Jack. I think he. I think he's Michael May is surmising that Jack Maddox, uh, Robert Forrest himself was, uh, or Foxworth is the main character. That guy's a film. fucking idiot. He might be a fucking idiot. Uh, last one here. Uh, one out of five stars. Pax and Holly says, "Eh, again, a TV movie that's somewhat a sequel to the 1969 Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid, cheaply made and not very interesting." Uh, Elizabeth Montgomery is fun to watch anyway in a role that isn't Samantha. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to FCF Airport. Local time is 11-11, and the temperature is 69 degrees. For your safety and comfort, please... We almost hit 69 degrees the other day. The oh, my God, that's so good. So close. We're so close. I, I, spring is almost here. Can you it, taste it? I, I, I keep my tongue out of my mouth just so I can try to taste it. I haven't tasted it yet. Uh, now we now we rate this. Now we say, what do we think about this? We've heard what other people we think uh, think about it. We've heard uh, some interesting facts. We put you in the mindset of the film. But now it's time for us to put our final stamp on it. Would you, would you like to talk about the grading scale? Sure. The grading scale is uh, one through seven. One being the worst. That's a Roy Biggins. <laughs> and Roy Biggins. These are all characters from Wings. Yeah, the television show Wings. Yeah, it's... it's the basis of our existence, My, really. Yeah, our lives. Yeah, our lives. It was supposed to be Golden Girls, but it ended up being Fuck wings. that. Number seven being the best, that's a Brian Hackett, and that's the best you can do. Captain Philip Rassasher, I turn to you. How do you rate Mrs. Sundance? I thought a lot about this. I think uh, Elizabeth Montgomery has a, an adorable nose, uh, beautiful eyes. And I saw some of her breastesses. Right. And not big, but still glistening. Um, I'm not a big Western guy, but I I was involved in this. I, I stayed with it. Yeah. Um, I'm going to give it a... a uh, I'm so torn. I'm going to give it a four. Awesome! Okay, that's a Joe Hackett. That's a good character. Uh, four, eh, mediocre score. Fine, right down the middle. This, yeah. I wanted to go a five. I really did want to do a yeah. five. If, uh, I, if I had, uh, if I could go back in time, right in your mind, in time, I would, I would give it a five. You could, you could do it. It's a, who gives a shit? All right, booby, booby bump. I'll give it a five. A booby bump, a bare breasticle bump. Okay, um, this is tough. I, I think the performances was good. Were good. It was a little slow at, at, at times. Not enough shoot 'em ups. I think that. Um, there, there has to be another element put into play in this, uh, in this film because I'm left wondering wh- what, t- how exciting is this going to be watching her escape from the clutches of local bounty men. Maybe she joins the bounty men at one point. Maybe she has to commit crimes, or maybe she, ha- maybe she does go to. J- you know, there's a lot yeah. of places it could go. But like, how, I, how interesting is that? Gonna yeah, be? I, I agree with you. I'm going to go back to a four. Okay, <laughs> and I also wonder if Jack is dead, which he might not be. I mean, we got a few characters. I'm sure Fanny Porter would pop up again as the uh, 
the uh, headmistress of the whorehouse. I think Jack's alive still. I would like I mean, to think yeah, that he is. You have to eat, they have to get meat back up because they're gonna. It, there's a love story, right? There's but, eventually going to be a love story here. I think so. You know what? I love a love story. I'm going to go back to a go five. back to a five. Yeah, All I'm right. going to go back to a five. I think I'm going to sit right there with you. I did, <sighs> I think I enjoyed this. I think it was pretty good. It's tough to think where it I was mad gone. when I saw the running time on it. Absolutely, I was mad. Be. Yeah, but I I enjoyed it. Were, were you Jack Maddox? <laughs> I give it a five, you give it a five, and with that, we close the book on Mrs. Sundance, and we will never mention that show again. Yever! But join us next time, won't you please, partners, when we uh, discuss the pilot episode of Shivers. Here's a little something to wet your whistle. It's not about pirates. I wish it was. Shiver me. Um, A divorced father and his children move into a house haunted by a Revolutionary War-era troublemaker and his Goyle friend. B plus. You can find the entire oh. episode of Shivers by subscribing to Couch Pilots and SoundCloud, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or your favorite podcast app of choice, and then simp- simply click on one of our classically blue links in our show notes, or go to YouTube, and you know what to do, Tube. <sighs> I'm going to keep up with those exercises. Yeah. I think they're really helping. I mean, you're doing better. I can, you. I, I, you're you're kind of like, probably like, right now, it's, it's like being on the keto diet. Thank like, you're you. peaking. Yes. But you have to push yourself to get further. I am in peaking right now, right? Peking, Illinois? Um, you're welcome. Uh, if you want to contact the program, it's it, you can. Like, <laughs> You're not going to. I don't think there is anything... There's nothing that you and I can do to stop someone from contacting sure. us. Sure, and there's nothing that you or I can do besides give an email address, right? a phone number to call. Mm-hmm. Other than that, we there's nothing we can do, and obviously we, we are not doing anything more to that. Right, yeah. You and I have put in the maximum amount of effort that we're uh, able to do. Uh, go to couchpilotspodcast.com. It is our website. We own it. No one, nobody can take that away from us. No, we just renewed it, by the way. Just renewed it. There was uh, one domain lived and one domain died Right. recently. Not sure what that means. Uh, GoDaddy said, hey, you're going to pay for both of these? I said, no, I'm going to pay for one. What's what's the one that died? Broken Funny Bone. R.I.P. Uh, BP. B- BB. Broken Funny BF. B- BFF. Uh, we're on Facebook, Twitter. You're my BFF. Hey, you know what? And you're my friend. Um, <laughs> call us at 910-PILOTS-1. It's 910-745-6871. Give us a call. Leave us a message. Did you like the show? Did you not like the show? Do you know about a pilot that we don't know about? Do you want to tell us how you changed the oil in your car? The best methods to do that. I'm always up for some interesting... Do you want to roast us? Yeah. Like do, call, yeah, tell, roast us. Call us up and roast us. Yeah, tell tell Blake he's a, he's a, he's a handsome man. Re- really give him a false sense of security. What, do you like my new haircut? Uh, no, it's the same as your old haircut. <laughs> it's It's a great haircut, but it's not new. Um, you can support us on Patreon if you want. Just go there and search Couch Pilots. There's a bunch of different stuff that we'll do for you, or at least say we'll do for you if you give us money. Um, Blake, do you have a message of positivity before we leave today? Something about your haircut, maybe? Uh, yeah, basically. Um, Tell us about your haircut. Yesterday was my birthday. Oh, that's right. The you didn't say anything about it on this episode. <laughs> and it's, You know what? No, no. Sh- you shut your mouth. Oh, okay. Uh, my message of positivity is... Sometimes you have a best friend that doesn't think ahead, and uh, and that's okay because you're still best friends, and uh, uh, it's a, it's a big day in your life. There's yeah. two there's two holidays that you like in in the year: uh, your birthday and Father's Day. Right. And your best friend, who uh, you know is the world to you, uh, forgets <laughs> about it. And when you do a podcast, so well, it is. Uh, that, that's that's the message of positivity. It is March second. I will say that Blake's got a piece of paper that says it's my birthday, and it says final draft at the top. <laughs> Happy birthday to you! This <laughs> oh, is, thank this, you. This, it, it is March second. I should say we're recording this on the second of March, so I will say happy birthday when the time comes. I should have mentioned it. I, I apologize for not making the entire show about you. Forty five, and still is crying about his fucking birthday. This pilot, go ahead, you do it. <coughs> oh God! This pilot may have been rough, but it's always a smooth flight on Couch Pilots. We'll see you next time. Good on you. On behalf of Couch Pilots and the entire crew, we'd like to thank you for joining us on this trip, and we are looking forward to seeing you on board again in the near future. Have a nice day.